I have unlocked the door to the Umbilicus. You are free to enter. Once you have what you require, I'll see it sealed once more. Until then, I will remain without. Moment to collect my thoughts, I prithee. Thy true name is Grahatia, then. By thy claims, thou too art a native of the Source, though from an age beyond our own, when the Eighth Umbral Calamity hath visited devastation upon our star. Thou hast, by subtle means, reached across the boundaries of time and space to unsow the seeds of catastrophe, ere its creeping vines drag our champion unto an early grave. In essence, yes. A difficult story to swallow, I am sure. I doubt not the veracity of thy words, not the account of thy coming, nor that of the fated calamity. Yet my mind straineth still to apprehend the enormity of this tale. Wouldst thou favor me with a gradual unfolding of its chapters? Certainly. But where to begin? I should start with those great minds who survived the calamity. Sid Garland being perhaps the greatest. In hopes of staying the unending tides of war, he and his fellows pursued all manner of possible solutions. One of these was rooted in a theory which unified several fundamental principles discovered over the course of the Warrior of Light's adventures. It proposed a method by which one could enter the river of time, traverse the rift, and leap between worlds. Perfecting that idea, however, was a work which consumed their lifetimes. And thus was it left to future generations to decide whether theory would be put into practice. But all the while, the world continued to burn. Hope was a feeble outpost beset on all sides by thievery and misery and murder. People cried out in despair, there is no hope. We are finished. Mankind is finished. Then others raised their voices in answer. Though we be beyond salvation, those who came before may yet be saved. We will forge a crossroads and pave the way for a different future. By the wisdom of our forebears, we will prevent this calamity from ever having come to pass. The fighting went on unabated, but some few took up Sid's research and labored to realize those impossible ideas. After two centuries of labor, their descendants finally succeeded in awakening the Crystal Tower an integral part of the process, and, in doing so, roused its caretaker, me. By this stage, scholars had largely established the phenomena underpinning the rejoining, and identified the first as the shard which precipitated the eighth umbral calamity. This grand structure was already capable of storing the energies required to attempt the translocation. All that remained was to augment some few of its functions based upon the theoretical models of Sid and his compeers. 
and by means of such technologies didst thou affect thine arrival in the first, to an age before this star had joined with the source. Some while before, as it turned out. It is all but impossible to predict how time will flow between one world and the next, and we missed our mark by almost an entire century. But this only worked in our favor. The Sin Eaters could not be defeated without the blessing of light, and summoning the only woman who might stand a chance against them would require decades of preparation. An undertaking of scarce credible endurance. That thou hast kept thy plan from falling into disarray these many years bordereth on the miraculous. Yet howsoever history be rewritten, thy present self was shaped by events which followed the calamity. Should said catastrophe be averted, the very skein of thine existence will unravel. Surely thou hast foreseen this. I am aware of the consequences. Tis for that very reason Sid and his colleagues bequeath their legacy as an offering, and not an edict. To give all of oneself for the happiness of others, and with no promise of reward. Tis a hard thing to ask. Harder still for those condemned to survive in a world which pitted brother against brother. Indeed, you are right to call the execution of this plan miraculous, though the force which held it together was nothing so inexplicable. It was her. The warrior of light has been our unbroken thread. Where others would stumble and fall, she would rise above. Where others would break and run, she would carry on. The Warrior of Light's tale is one of unyielding bravery. To tell it was to feel courage. To hear it was to feel hope. It was a breath of inspiration in an age of suffocating shadow. In the histories of a fallen nation was our hero hailed as its greatest ally. In the time-worn pages of a noble's memoirs were her deeds joyously retold. For many, these stories were the flame which warmed them through the coldest of nights. And so it should come as little surprise that the plan found no shortage of volunteers, concerning as it did the Warrior of Light herself. It was their chance to add their own verse to the hero's saga. She was the lodestar that brought them all together to send their final message back through time and space to her. The light of your legacy was our torch in the darkness. Burn bright again and live. I am merely the bearer of that wish. Come to ensure it is safely delivered. Wherefore sharest thou this burden with me and no other? What wouldst thou have me say? That you will be my accomplice? Twas you yourself who convinced me of your suitability when you spoke of how you learned of the Flood and of your part in arranging Minfilia's journey to the First. Your actions showed uncommon resolve. It was clear you were committed to the cause of saving this world. I knew I could trust you to choose the right path forward, even if that choice came with a heavy price. What price? When all is said and done, and the last of the Light Wardens lies slain, 
I will absorb their corrupted ether. And then I will die. Knowing what I know of your companions, not to mention your champion, they will try to stop me. But in saving one, they would save none. Therefore, I implore you to aid me in concealing my identity and ensuring this tale ends as it must. To this end, I would have you take what I have told you of the Calamity and make of it a portent, a prophetic vision you beheld in the swirling chaos of the Rift. Is this truly thy wish? History remembered the Warrior of Light, as I knew it would. And I will suffer no other to rescue the champion whose star has charted my course. I will see this tale to a happy end, my friend. There has been enough tragedy. Careful now. If you lose control again, the light could claim you for good. Although it's probably only a matter of time before you succumb to the change in any case. What do you mean to do? mentioned the Tempest, did he not? That's the stormy seas around Calusia to you. His lair must be down there somewhere, hidden beneath the waves. have found thee. Word reached us of thy recovery, and thus did we gather with all haste. Ah. By thy looks I gather thou hast gleaned that which I came to tell thee. Orionger has shared everything with us. The Exarch's true identity and purpose. I offer no excuses. When I agreed to aid the Exarch with his plans, it was in full acceptance of the condemnation I would face when my duplicity was laid bare. 
Yet it is not rancor, but resolve that I sense in thee. Thou art fully intent upon walking thy path to its end, art thou not? If thou canst forgive my deception, or, failing that, set aside thy displeasure for a time, I do beg leave to follow thee. What strength and wisdom I possess are thine to command. Pray believe me when I say that I took no pleasure in deceiving thee. Indeed, I curse the circumstances which compelled me to do so. But no further secrets lie between us, I swear it. I'm sorry, but I don't think this is a good idea. Leaving the Crystarium, I mean, with or without Uriante. What I did for you won't last forever. There's no telling when the light will break free again. Please, you must stay here. At least for a little while longer, we will find a way to cure this, I promise you. How can you make promises? We don't even know where to start. Alizé, please. You know Reen was only trying to help. Of course I know! I know only too well! But making promises you have no way of keeping is not a kindness. It's a lie. Plain and simple. We've all searched high and low for an answer. And every one of us came back empty-handed. I am not about to stand in her way now. Not after failing her in her hour of need. No. The least we can do is... We will go with you as well. There is naught to be gained by standing still. Indeed, we have exhausted every other avenue. Lead and we shall follow. If there is any hope to be found, then we will surely find it at your side. Are we all in agreement then? Is there aught we can do to help? Though we may not know the whole story, we do know you're in for a fight. And while the Exarch's away, it falls to the rest of us to see the Warrior of Darkness is given a proper send-off. You told them! No. Well, not in so many words. Fine. We didn't need it spelled out for us. When the night sky appeared over whichever place you went to, it was harder not to put two and two together. From the moment I heard that you and the Exarch shared the homeland, I had my suspicions. Long had he been waiting for a certain someone to arrive, and I knew at once that it must be you. Exactly. When he went up to meet you, it was clear it was no ordinary visitor. That spring in his step spoke volumes. I could feel his excitement. We do not fully understand where you or the Exarch hail from, or why you've all done so much to protect us. But we are deeply grateful nonetheless. So, if there is anything at all we might do to aid your journey, you need only name it. What would you have of us? You might have invited them to join us, where there are not so many. But come, they are waiting. What is your will, O oh warrior of darkness? 